sometimes we um, have strict constraints on our fixed pivot locations. By fixed pivot, we mean the ground locations O2 and O4, generally where the crank and the rocker um, are uh, joined to the ground via revolute joints. We can use inversion to find linkage, to find a linkage with fixed pivots and the given three positions of coupler motion. We then need to determine the location of the moving pivots. Now this whole procedure is quite a bit different than um, the procedure in which we are given specified moving pivots. That is the more normal, the easier to do um, design. Previously, we looked at that design um, here where we had three positions with um, fixed moving um, pivots. Um, these moving pivots are often those lines which will be labeled as example in this slide C1, D1, C2, D2, and C3, D3. Those lines represent the coupler and the coupler as we know is um, connected to the crank at C at the C at the joint label C and connected to the rocker at the joint label D. And so these are moving pivots because C and D actually move. And we do that simply by um, drawing lines from C1 to C2 and from C2 to C3 and then using um, these perpendicular bisectors here and here where they um, cross is a rotopole position O2. That will be one ground position. And then we draw a line from D1 to D2 and D2 to D3. And we do perpendicular bisectors to those and we get points O4, ground position O4. Um, we connect a crank or we call in this particular case, um, this is a non grashoff linkage. So we draw a rocker from O2 to C1 and from that O4 found position to D1. And then what we'll find is that as this rocker link 2 moves, um, C1 will go to C2 and then the C3. At the same time, D1 goes to D2 and D3. So this is not a hard design to do. There's only one choice for O2 and O4. The problem is oftentimes when we're doing a real design, the positions O2 and O4 will be decided for us ahead of time. We still have to move um, this link C1, D1 through the positions two and three. That hasn't changed, but the ground position has been specified for us. This is of course a problem in the current design because ground positions O2 and O4 were determined based upon the crossing of these perpendicular bisectors. So if we wanted these locations O2 and O4 to be in a different location, for example, if we wanted O4 to be here, that would be quite difficult because the only location that we found where these two lines intersect is exactly right here. So what we're going to focus on now is how to do a, a design where we have a specified fixed pivot location. And we're told that the way that we're going to do that is that we're going to use inversion. And you may recall that inversion simply means we're going to ground a different link in the kinematic chain. And so as we start, we're going to start with um, the uh, coupler positions that we have seen before, C1, D1, C2, D2, and C3, D3. We need to move um, these links through these three positions, this one being the first position, the second position, and the third position. But this time we have a specified fixed pivot location, O2 and O4. So these are what our ground positions have to be. Um, and so the way we're going to do that is we're going to draw link CD. Well, link CD has been drawn as three positions. And we're going to use construction arcs. And I'm going to explain that in a second to connect C2, D2 to the ground points O2 and O4. And we'll see that on the next slide. And so here we have um, these construction arcs and they look like triangles. And what we've done, if we've put the base of one triangle here um, at C2, D2, and then it goes down and connects at O2. And then the same thing has been done here. We've connected another triangle with its base at C2, D2, and then we have a leg coming from C2 down the O4 and a leg coming from D2 down the O4. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move that construction arc to line C1, D1. So we're going to take this one from the middle and we're going to just slide it over to here. This point O2 is going to create a new 
ground position, and we're going to call that O2 prime. And this point O4, again, is also going to move in, in when we move this arc over to this line C1, D1. So our O2, O4 are going to remain there, except we'll have two new ground positions, O2 prime and O4 prime. And let's see those now. So now we've taken those construction arcs, with which were here, they did have their base at C2D2, we've moved them over to C1D1. We have not changed the shape of these construction arcs. These triangles are the same triangles that were there at the C2D2 location. We simply moved them over to the C1D1, and then of course gotten two new positions at the at the apex of these uh, triangles. So we have O2 prime and O4 prime. So we label the new construction points O2 prime and O4 prime. And now we're gonna repeat the same process with the line C3, D3. So we've taken these same construction arcs and we've moved them over to here. If we were doing this actually with paper, what we'd be doing is we'd be actually cutting these out and moving them from place to place as we've done here and then using our pencil right here at the end point to create our new lines. So C3, D3, O2 to O4, right? So new construction arcs, you can tell that these two construction arcs are not the same as the ones we have here. Okay, we're doing this again just as we did with the C2, D2 line. And so here's a new construction arc going from C3, D3 at its base to our original ground position O2 and from CD3 here back down to our original ground second ground position O4 we're going to move those again over to our C1D1 line and you see now we have a new ground position O2 double prime and O4 double prime so we grabbed them from the C3D3 line and moved them back over to the C1D1 just as we did previously with the C2D2 and if we go now to our finished situation, our finished um, uh, construction arc uh, links, what we have is a C1D1. We have our original O2, O4. We have an O2 prime, O4 prime, and the O2 double prime, O4 double prime that we just created. So now we're going to assume that these red lines are our new coupler positions. We have three of them, and we're going to proceed with synthesis as normal. And so let's move along. We're going to proceed as normal. Notice we've relabeled the original um, O2, O4 as E1, F1, the O2 prime, O4 prime as E2, F2, and the final O2 double prime, O4 double prime as E3, F3. We're going to proceed with synthesis as normal, doing a three-position synthesis with these EF lines. So <clears throat> from E1 to E2, from E2 to E3, we are dropping perpendicular bisectors, and we have a ground position here called G. And from F1 to F2, from F2 to F3, perpendicular bisector here, perpendicular bisector here, new rotopole here, that's another ground position we're going to label H. And so now we simply need to connect our positions from our ground to those particular links E1, F1. So from G, which was created by going E1, E2, E2, E3, we're going to go up to our E position. And so we see that link here. And from <clears throat> our F, which from F to F, F1, F2, F2 to F3 gave us this rotopole. We're going to go from F1 to H. And so here we see our linkage, our four bar. Ground position at G, ground position at H. Here's one link, here's our coupler, and here's our final link. And so we see that this coupler point, this coupler link, E1, F1, will move to E2, F3, E2, F2, and then to E3, F3. But we must remember that E1 and F1 should not actually be our coupler. If we recall, we go back a little bit here, E1, F1 is actually our ground position, our desired fixed pivot, O2, O4. Now, since it exists in our linkage as a coupler, we can make it our ground simply by doing an inversion, which means grounding a different link in the chain. So we're actually going to ground the E1, F1 link and make the other links um, moving. And so GH will become now a movement link and GE1 will still be moving as will HF1. And so we see that here where we've made E1 our O2 
position and F1, our O4, that becomes our ground. So our ground is now the O2, O4 that we originally wanted and it was the E1, F1, previously the moving coupler. And then we still have our E1, G as a moving link and our H04 as a moving link. So this linkage that you see right here is the linkage that we need. It has the two ground points that we need and as long as we connect the original line, um, the original, let's go to the next slide, the original C1, D1 link in this coupler link, GH, we will move from C1, D1 to C2, D2, to C3, D3. So what we do now is we simply extend this link here up so that it contains the C1, D1 line. Now we must remember that this link, though it has this kind of funny U shape, right? The shape of a link does not matter. The only thing that matters is where it connects to other links. In other words, where are its joints? And it has a joint here at G and a joint here at H. It simply has been drawn up this way so that it can, can contain the original line of concern which was C1, D1. We just as easily could have made this link a big circle. It would have still contained the line C1, D1 and as long as we have joints here and here we have the same thing. So now if we rotate our link, for example if we consider this link to be our crank and we rotate it we will find that that C1, D1 goes to C2, D2, and then finally the C3, D3. And I got a, a video is on your um, CD that came with this particular text. This is figure 3-11, and you can kind of see this thing actually moving. Um, and as it moves, you can see C1, D1 go to C2, D2, to the C3, D3, and then back up, ready to start again. Now, position synthesis for more than three positions. If we add more constraints on our motion, it becomes much more difficult to find a solution. For example, if we had four positions, as an example. For more than three positions, a numerical, analytical synthesis, and probably a computer will be required for the solution. Again, right before I finish, just want to restate that the whole purpose here was to do three position synthesis with these three lines, but have our ground position specified ahead of time. And we did that by first using construction arcs on C2, D2, down to this line, O2, O4, moved them over to C1, D1 to find two new positions. And then we did the same thing with C3, D3, moved them over to C1, D1 to find two more O2 prime and O4 double prime, O2 double prime and O4 double prime, excuse me. And then we have these three new lines. We go ahead and do synthesis like we always have on these three lines. And we find a linkage that works. And then we simply do inversion to make sure that our ground positions are the E1, F1, the original desired O2, O4. Then we use that coupler to connect our original line and we have our working mechanism. And that's the end of this um, presentation.